So instead of finding a little back gate, you found the gate at China. Right. How big is that? For uh, well, you guys? I mean, it's really big. If you would ask me at the beginning of the excavation, uh, Scott, in your perfect world, what would you uncover? I would have said, well, the gate and the tabernacle. And lo and behold, it appears that in our field, we have both of those features. Hey everybody, we're back in Shiloh, one of the most amazing places in the entire world. Why? We are in the biblical heartland of Israel, and Shiloh is the heart of Israel. This is where the capital was for Israel for over 300 years. The tabernacle was here. So many Bible stories happened here, and there's a dig going on. We are going to cover the Shiloh Dig 2023 to find out what they have found on this very last day of a month-long dig. In just a few minutes, two big buses full of volunteers and a van full of archeologists is gonna arrive and we're gonna follow them in and show you what they found here at Shiloh. Awesome, awesome stuff. You're gonna love it. Just like to say hi to all the Ingrace viewers this morning. Come to Shiloh, Jeremiah 712. I love looking at the finds, the stones, and the places that are so tied in together with our faith here at Shiloh. Over the last few years that we've been filming here at Shiloh, we've been able to sit down with Scott Stripling and others, and they've shown us the incredible small finds. Last year, Scott found these two beautiful gold stars. Again, gold is rare to find in archeology, span and they found two in this same bone pile, this Favisa deposit. So we're going to find out what else they found in this spot today. And then one of the greatest two finds that they found here in the past, the ceramic palm granites. They found four of the five prongs intact. And if you remember in Exodus 28, these would have hung from the high priest's robe. They've also found three horns for a four-horned altar, likely from the Iron Age, again, lining up with scripture as the Bible describes these things. Now we're gonna find out what they found this year as we always wait for the final week and the final day of the dig to make sure we're able to be part of all of the exciting discoveries that they've made in Shiloh this year. We're trying to find the corners of this monumental building, which your theory would be it's the tabernacle or the platform of the tabernacle. And this corner is really interesting. So this is the, what, southeast corner? This is our southeast corner, and we have the other three corners, clearly. Now, this is a new square, right? You knew, you thought this would have been the, the corner by measurement, by other corners you found. What else did you find here? Well, we have, um the socket stone for a door. And when we anticipated the dimensions of the building, I estimated that the door would have been here. When we came down just about half a meter, there was the socket stone of the door in place. And that's really important because the Bible mentions architectural features. When you get features like a gate or a door or a wall in the text, you would love to find confirmation. The socket stone was exactly where we anticipated it would be. The first hint comes from the text itself in 1 Samuel 3. At the beginning of the chapter, you're reading about the curtains of the tabernacle. By the end of the chapter, you're reading about the walls of the tabernacle. Then we go to the Mishnah, the Seder Olam and the Zebayim, both say that a permanent structure was built at Shiloh with a tent over it as a roof. Then along come archeologists here 3,100 years later, and we uncover a building that matches that description. That's not a coincidence. We started with the, the least impressive corner and we'll work our way to the most impressive, okay? If this is the least impressive, <laughs> we have a great program today. All right, let's go to the next one. So we're standing at the northeast corner of this monumental building. You can see the wall comes all the way across from our area H, comes under the pathway, comes here and forms a corner. So when we did the dimensions from the biblical text of where the corner should be. We anticipated that, we opened a square here, and there was the corner. That's amazing because your theory then is verified at least in this little instance. People sometimes use the term biblical archeology span as a pejorative, but not for me. Um, the Bible gave us the dimensions, archeology span showed us exactly what the Bible was talking about. 
Okay, so you're looking at our dividing wall here. So you're standing, if our hypothesis is correct, you're in the Holy of Holies. So the Ark of the Covenant would have been here for over three centuries. That's pretty awesome. Okay, Jim, this is our southwest corner. And you can see where the large early Roman or New Testament period wall sits right on top of this earlier wall and it meets up here. Okay. So that's the corner we were looking for. And next season, of course, we'll have to go back and do more. But with the math, having the other corners, then we were able to do the math and give us the fourth corner. So here is the southwest corner. That's right. Of the tabernacle and the southwest corner of the Holy of Holies. We are now in the final corner. Jim, this is really well preserved. The wall we looked at from the other side, here it is coming across, right okay? This is our wall 10. Okay. Why does it dip down like this? Mm. Because there was a huge New Testament period wall that cut through here that we've uh, now removed. Uh, and on top of that was a big Byzantine wall. So we've removed this big Byzantine wall, this big early Roman wall, and here's the corner right here. So you have like a three-dimensional puzzle on your hands. That's right. From centuries apart. And yeah, how do you, how do you likes keep... a good jigsaw puzzle, we have the ultimate jigsaw puzzle. Now, this item is pretty cool. And this was just found. Just yesterday in the square right next to us. So this just came out of the dirt from how many thousands of years ago? Okay, so we're gonna analyze it today, but um, this is either from Iron Age One or from the Bronze Age. So both would relate to the tabernacle period. It's rare to find the lid with the vessel hmm. intact. So Jim, why don't you take the lid off? Let's see what's in here. Okay, do wow. you see those holes yeah. in the side and then the hole in the lid? Sure, so that... there's holes here and they line, it looks like they li would line up with these holes. Exactly, huh. and then you fasten them and now you have a secure lid. You keep bugs out of your, your stuff. Amazing. So this is the type of stuff that was used in daily life, but it's next to this monumental building. So it's not, it's common in one sense, but it's not common in another because Samuel may have used this vessel. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Beautiful. You know, the Bible compares us to clay vessels in many places. God is the potter, us is the clay, and he fits us just right, mm. doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, sometimes it doesn't seem like it, but he knows what he's doing. Yeah. This is an area that is really exciting because it's a sacred bone deposit or it's called a favisa. Right. And you started doing some work here last year. We have about 100,000 bones that we anticipate are gonna come out of this area. Um, every day, bones and pottery from the time of Joshua. They dump these bones after the sacrificial process. They come to the edge of the city outside the camp and this becomes a sacred deposit. The bones are disproportionately from the right side of the animal, interestingly. No pig bones in here, only kosher animals. And as we're bringing down these balks, in each balk we find the, the bone levels in a microstratigraphy, like it's been laid down over time, because you have three centuries of a sacrificial system taking place here. We don't have this in Jerusalem, okay? Here we get to actually see for the first time what the sacrificial system was like. We're finding thousands and thousands of bones. So there, there's something that's going on here. They're, they're, they're depositing uh, these animals here. And so we're finding sheep, we're finding goat. And then a good portion of the bones are from the right side of the animal. A couple of days ago, we pulled out some sheep jaw bones all three of them in a very similar area, and all three of them on the right side of the animal. We didn't find any left-sided animals. And so we, you know, as a Bible reader, you immediately, you know, go back to uh, the book of Leviticus, where we understand that the priest's portion was the right side of the animal. We're here at Shiloh, where the priests lived, uh, and uh, it would make sense that they're, they're, they're eating this and they're depositing this here in this area. You're also finding other things that could be offerings as well. Explain the pottery and the other objects. Let's think about the sacrificial process. You come to Shiloh and you wanna reconnect with God and with other people through the shedding of blood. It's not just the animal sacrifice, there's a libation also. So the vessels that we find here 
are mostly restorable vessels. They can all be put back together. That's very rare. Mm. That tells us that these are libations. The, the drink offering has been poured out and then the vessel has value. The vessel itself is broken. Some of the best looking pottery we have comes from there, which means they brought offerings probably beyond the, the, the sacrifice, but uh, grain offerings and other things in pretty vessels. And you would break the vessels and then we get this other stuff like gold. In the midst of those things, somebody gave, you don't know, just lose gold, you know, you're gonna go find it. So that was dedicated to God and nobody else would touch it because it belonged to him. I believe that these are offerings. And so they're bringing these gold stars and along with the animal sacrifice and the libation, they're giving a great financial gift. Mm -hmm. So is this just uncovered? Just here. Okay, so here's another one Scott just handed to me, hot off the presses. Okay, so there you go. This is what you're finding as you excavate through here. We clean these, we wash them, label them, and if possible, we extract collagen from them so that we can carbon date them. Huh. That was something that was never done before here at Shiloh. Okay, and you actually have a zoo archaeologist on site this That's year, right. which is brand new. That's How right. helpful has that been? Well, it's extremely helpful because he is then enabling us to identify the species of the animal, mm -hmm. male and female, age of the animal. Like, for example, in the other squares on site, when we get animal bone, they're older animals. They were work animals. Huh. The, they were huh. bearing burden. Sure. Here you have young animals. Uh -huh. and disproportionately from the right side of the, of the animal. So all of this is very, very helpful to us in understanding the sacrificial system. It's very important that we as Christians stand with Israel. The way that you can do that is contact us today here at In Grace and get this bookmark for free. It says, I stand with Israel and the Jewish people, and on the back, Genesis 12, 3. You can also make a gift of any amount and get this beautiful poster, again, showing your support for the Jewish people and being reminded that God promises a blessing to those that bless Israel. Contact us today. Stand with Israel by getting these resources. Call 800-78-GRACE or go to ingrace.tv for more information. I know, Scott, that when we were filming here in years past, you were excited because you thought that maybe you'd found one of the features that you're looking for, one of the main features that archaeologists want to find, and that's a gate. But I think you were thinking maybe it was a, a back gate, yeah. side gate. You found something completely <laughs> different and yeah. massive. This is really exciting, Jim. Last season, we got these pillars beginning to emerge. Huh. They're parallel with that big wall. There's five courses of these massive pillars intact here. So we still haven't reached the bottom here. We now see a wall going across, forming an L. So I think we're in the outer gate chamber of ancient Shiloh, the gate that's mentioned in the Bible. And you have a gate, we usually think of a gate as just a gate and opening, but right. these were multi-chamber gates and a lot was going on within, within the gate. Well, if you can remember how to spell the word gate, uh, you can remember four major functions of a gate. G-A-T-E, uh, G is to guard, so defensibility is very important. Uh, the A is for administrate or administration. So legal transactions happening here, the leaders gathering, like in the book of Ruth. Uh, T would be trade, uh, buying and selling, that's commerce. And uh, you can even still see that today in like the Damascus Gate, a lot of people gathering there to uh, buy and sell. And then the E would be extol, that's worship. So it was also a place of worship at the gate and all those uh, examples are found in scripture. So instead of finding a little back gate, you found the gate at Shiloh. Right. How big is that? For uh, well, you guys? I mean, it's really big. If you would ask me at the beginning of the excavation, Scott, in your perfect world, what would you uncover? I would have said, well, the gate and the tabernacle. And lo and behold, it appears that in our field, we have both of those features. And again, the gate is talked about in the Bible, a really sad episode of Eli the high priest, hearing mm. bad news mm. and falling and dying. And yeah. this would have been the location of that. The loss of the Ark of the Covenant, the loss of his sons, 
and then the mm -hmm. loss of his life. And then, his, of course, his daughter-in-law gives birth, and the, the baby is called Ichabod. The glory of the Lord has departed. Mm -hmm. Now we're in the inner gate, so point out some of the features. Okay, you come into the inner gate of the city, and this is where justice would be meted out. The elders are sitting in the gate of the city. And then most interestingly, Jim, is right behind you, this chamber, and that's an inset chamber within the inner gate. And this is where you can picture that the leader or the ruler of the city, in our case, Eli, uh, would have been sitting. So if you're picturing Eli, sitting here in this inner gate chamber, and he's looking for the runner to come to bring news. Well, there's the road right there. And that's the modern road, but these are following the ancient, the road yeah. of the patriarch. Chris Mitchell, CBN, Middle East correspondent for 22 years. Yeah. I thought we'd be able to talk to you for a few minutes. Yeah, just about great. Maybe first your impressions of this dig. Well, I first came out here many years ago before any of this excavation was going on. So when you come out here and you see what has been done in the last several years, it's incredible. And it's like literally walking back into the Bible. You're sitting where Eli was. <laughs> we don't want to fall back like he did. Right. But this is where Hannah was. This is where Samuel was when he heard the voice of the Lord. The tabernacle, perhaps, they've discovered. It really is literally walking back into the Bible. This is Abigail Levitt. She's the assistant director here at the Dig in Shiloh. And you've had quite an exciting season here. We have. And you get to show us some goodies here, huh? Yeah, so this is a sling stone that came out. Worked flint stones into nice round balls that, you know, you think David and Goliath? This is probably from the Roman period, Roman military. So when the Jews revolted in the first century AD and the Romans came in to kind of squelch the rebellion, this is what they would have been slinging at the local inhabitants. And this was found approximately where? Up near the Jewish homes, um, up kind of on the top of our area. And the Romans did attack this area then, so. They did, well, yeah. That's sad. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting artifact. Yeah, and then this is a really nice find. We uh, found this one over in the bone deposit area in area D, and um, this is a scarab, so the back of it is shaped like a beetle. You can see the little face, it's got little legs on the sides, but then on the belly of the beetle, which I can't show the cameras, um, is a really pretty design. And a lot of these will have an Egyptian pharaoh's cartouche on it or something. This one doesn't have a cartouche, but it does have some hieroglyphs on it. Okay, so the reason we can't show it is basically because you guys need to study it more, you need to, mm you know, write about it. Right, So yeah. we, we can't give you more detail, but you found a scarab mm -hmm. here, and how will that help you? Um, so scarabs are really good for dating because they're, um, they have distinct designs from different periods, um, especially the part on the belly that actually has lettering on it, but even the, the stylistic part on the back and the sides, the, the beetle image um, changes over time. Um, I'll show you one more thing. Um, and this was also out of the, uh, the bone deposit. And this is a really pretty uh, mother of pearl pendant. It's just broken a little bit. Mm. Um, wow. But we hardly ever find these intact. Mm. So just a really pretty piece of jewelry. We're finding all kinds of beautiful things out of that deposit. Uh, richer finds than we're finding anywhere else on site. So we think that that speaks to probably the, the cultic um, nature of, of that, the bone deposit probably contained offerings as well as uh, the bones of animals. Yeah. Again, to stress how unusual this is and mm -hmm. the previous gold finds that you found there. Mm -hmm. uh, let me hold that for one second. Mm -hmm. uh, these are unusual, very unusual to find such a concentration yes. of expensive objects mm -hmm. exactly. in, in, one, in one place. I absolutely love being at this site here in Shiloh, or as the proper pronunciation is, Shiloh. And Shiloh is used over 30 times in the Old Testament, but it's almost always used as a name of a place. But it is used one time in the Bible. I believe it to be a messianic prophecy in 
Genesis 49, verse 10, it says this, The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and until him shall the gathering of the people be. What does that mean? Well, Shiloh probably is connected to the word shalom, which is peace, so it's this idea of tranquility. The Messiah is going to come and bring tranquility to this land that has seen so much conflict and so much war. And even today, we're in the biblical heartland of Israel in Samaria, it's still called the West Bank, and there's, there's terrorism that happens in these areas. Well, there's a day when a peacecomer will come and solve the world's problems. We've tried to solve the problems of the world, we can't, it seems to be getting worse. Well, one day, the problem solver will arrive. His name is Jesus, or perhaps Shiloh. Do you know him? Have you received him by faith? Have you put your trust in him? The Bible says, for by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We can be saved from our sins, from our imperfections, from our mistakes, from our not telling the truth, our lies, all of the, the sins that we have in our lives. We can be saved from those sins because the perfect one paid for them on a cross. He died and he rose again. And if you will believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved today and forever. It's very important that we as Christians stand with Israel. The way that you can do that is contact us today here at In Grace and get this bookmark for free. It says, I stand with Israel and the Jewish people, and on the back, Genesis 12, three. You can also make a gift of any amount and get this beautiful poster, again, showing your support for the Jewish people and being reminded that God promises a blessing to those that bless Israel. Contact us today. Stand with Israel by getting these resources. Call 800-78-GRACE or go to ingrace.tv for more information. Next week on In Grace. I grew up believing that God created the heavens and the earth. And we are going to be talking to a creationist who is a marine biologist. And he and I are going to explore God's amazing oceans. Definitely a very beautiful reef. And here's my dinner shirt coming at us. Record every single In Grace episode. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's Word. In Grace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.